This video will look at search algorithms. Now a search algorithm, unsurprisingly, is used to find items um, in a set of data. And there are two standard algorithms that have been developed um, to do this. They are the linear search algorithm and the binary search algorithm. Now the linear search algorithm is very, very straightforward in how it works. It's also known as the serial search. And ultimately all it does is it looks at a set of data. You uh, provide the algorithm with the item that you want it to find. Um, and it will look through each item in the set of data in turn until it finds the one it's looking for. So if we wanted to find the letter D, then the search algorithm would start at index zero and would have a look there. It's an A, that's not a D, so therefore it will add one to the um, index that it's looking at. So it now looks at index one and you can see that it's an F, that's not a D. So the comparison comes out as being false. So one is added on um, to the index that it's looking at. So it now looks at index two, finds a B, it's not there, move on one. It's an E, move on one, it's a D, it's found the item that it's looking for and the linear search algorithm would stop. So here's a flow chart to demonstrate that. The flow chart um, shows the logic that's applied. It tries to get, first of all, the length of the array. In this case, the length of the array is seven. And I suppose the flow chart doesn't actually um, say what's um, very important, which is that it, once it's got the seven, uh, once it knows that the length of the data set is seven, it begins at index zero. Now, if it's at index zero, it checks to see whether that is at the end of the array. Well, zero doesn't equal seven, so it knows that it's not at the end of the, the array. So then it moves on to see whether the item there is the one that it's looking for. Well, if it's looking for a D, an A is found at index zero, so therefore it's not found the item. So the pointer is moved to the next array index. So one is added to the uh, pointer. It then looks at index one, and it repeats and it keeps doing that until it finds the item that it's looking for. And here is an algorithm for the linear search in pseudocode. So we start off at index zero, so position is equal to zero. We have a, a, vari a flag variable that we set to false um, so to allow the algorithm to realize that we haven't yet found the item that we're looking for. And then we have our while condition, so a while loop where the condition is that if, or whilst, sorry, the position is less than the length of the array. So whilst it's not at the end of the array, and whilst our found flag is equal to false, in other words, we haven't found the item, what we do is we have a look to see whether the item that we're looking for is at that particular location. If it is, then we display item at position, position plus one, because obviously we're using indexes. So if it was at the f first position, that would be index zero. So we add one to it to say that it's position one. And then we say that the um, item, or we change the flag, the found flag to true, so that the algorithm knows not to repeat that while loop and it can finish. Otherwise, we add one on to our position variable, uh, which means that we're moving on to the next item in the list and we're seeing if it's there. So it just repeats all the way through until either it gets to the end of the array or um, it has found the item, until it's found the item where the found flag becomes true. So binary search. So the binary search um, algorithm is only possible if the items in that, in that uh, data set are already ordered. They have to be ordered. That's such an important thing to recognize. Binary searches do not work unless the data set is first ordered. And what it then does is, strangely, it looks in the middle of the array. So if you've got your set of data, it doesn't start at the beginning. It will start by looking at the center item. Now, because the data set is ordered, by going to the middle, it can very quickly work out whether the item is there and if it's not there, it can work out whether the item that it's looking for is less than that middle item. In other words, it's in the lower half of the data set. Or um, if it's greater than the, 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 um, 
that middle item, in which case we know that it's going to be in the top half of the data set. And that is why the binary search algorithm is so good, that for every single comparison that we do, every time we look for a particular, or look in the middle to see if the item's there, we can actually half the um, data set that we then need to look at in the next iteration, in the next um, cycle. And because of that, it's this binary search algorithm uses something called the divide and conquer principle, and it's incredibly efficient. So let's have a look in a little bit more detail. Let's have a look at a, a visual example of the binary search. So let's say that we're searching for the letter G, and you can see that the letter G is at index 6 at the moment. So what we'd do if we were to do a binary search is we'd look at the middle item. Now to find the middle item as an algorithm, um, what we'd do is we'd have a look to see uh, what the uh, lowest index is and what the highest index is in this particular data set. So 0 is the lowest and 10 is the highest. So we look at the lower bound, which is 0, and the upper bound, which is 10. And what we do is we add them together and divide by 2 to find our midpoint, which is 5. Now the divide and conquer out or the binary search algorithm will then have a look at the item that is in position 5 which is a letter F. Now in the alphabet F is before G so what that means is that the binary search algorithm knows that the letter that it's looking for the letter G is in the top half of the array and what it allows it to do is to then halve the size of the array that it's going to look at in the next cycle. So it knows that it's going to be higher than F in the data set, so therefore everything before F in that data set can be ignored. For the algorithm to then start again in the next cycle, we need to update the lower bound. So the lower bound was at index 0. The lower bound is now going to be updated to one more than the midpoint, the previous uh, midpoint index. Now the midpoint last time was 5 so we add 1 to 5 to get 6 that becomes our new lower bound and then we repeat the process we now need to find the midpoint of this array so the lower bound is 6 the upper bound is 10 10 plus 6 is 16 half of 16 is 8 so we've got the new midpoint which is 8 and the item that is at position 8 of this particular array is the letter I. Now I is higher than G in the alphabet so what we can now do is we can ignore the the top half of this new sub array. So that just leaves an array of two items. Now the lower bound from before was 6, the upper bound is now going to be recalculated so the midpoint from before was 8 one less than the midpoint is 7, that's our new upper bound. So we've got to find the midpoint now um, of this new array, this new subset. Now we add 6 and we add 7 together. We divide by 2. Now that doesn't produce an integer, that produces a decimal value, 6.5. Now at this point, you might be thinking, well, how on earth can I have a look to see what's at... Uh, position 6.5 because there isn't one. Well what we do with the uh, binary search is that we will then round it either up or down depending on how we set up our algorithm. It doesn't matter as long as we're consistent every time we go through the cycle. So in this case um, we can round up to 7. Let's just take it one further so we'll use that as our midpoint. Now the item that is in position 7 is an H now H is higher or above G in the alphabet, so we can remove that uh, or half the, the data set again, so we can ignore the um, what's the index 7 in this case. So now we've got a new subarray of one item. The index is 6 for the lower bound, the index is 6 for the upper bound. 6 plus 6 is 12, divided by 2 is 6, so we've got our midpoint of 6 and the item that is there is the one that we're looking for, which is the letter G. Hooray, the algorithm worked. 
So here is an example of a flowchart to demonstrate the logic of that particular algorithm. And ultimately, it's exactly what I've just gone through. Okay, we are looking at the length of the list so that we can um, know what the upper bound is going to be. The lower bound is obviously going to start off at zero. Uh, and then we need to find our midpoint. So we add the upper bound and lower bound together. We divide by two, we get our midpoint. Is the item there? If it is, then brilliant, we found it and we can finish. If not, then we have a look to see, okay, is the item that we're looking for greater or smaller than the item that's at the midpoint? If it is greater than the item at the midpoint, then we update our lower bound to be uh, one more than the midpoint. But if the item that we're looking for is less than the middle item, then we update our upper bound to be one less than the midpoint. And we repeat until we find the item that we're looking for. And here is an example of the algorithm presented in pseudocode. We can have a flag variable, set it to false, our lower bound, which in this case is called first, is set to zero. Our upper bound, in this case the variable is called last, can be the length of the, the list minus one. Now the reason for it being minus one, remember we are talking about um, the uh, index for the upper bound. So in this case you can see that there are 11 items Okay, letters A to K, there are 11 items, so the length is 11, but that upper bound is 10, that's one less than the length of the array. Now, whilst the found flag is set to false, we get our midpoint by adding the upper bound and lower bound together and divided by two. If the midpoint is the one that uh, it has the, the item that we're looking for, then we can say that we found that item, we can change found flag to true and we can break out of that loop and the algorithm can finish. Otherwise what we can do is we can check to see if the uh, lower bound is greater than the um, upper bound which just means that we have got to the end of the array and we can um, without finding the item that we want and we can break out of that loop. Otherwise what we can do is we can see okay is the item that we're looking for greater than the one that's at the midpoint. If it is then we can update our upper bound to be one less than, in fact, I think maybe this is the wrong way around. Let's have a, have a quick think about this one. If the item that we're looking for, I said it wrong, is less than the item at the midpoint, then we know it's going to be in the lower half of the array. So correctly, um, as it's shown here, we update our upper bound to be one less than the midpoint, Otherwise, we update our lower bound to be one more than the midpoint. And then we loop round and we continue again, okay, on a data set that's half the size. So big O notations, the complexity of these algorithms. For a linear search, the big O notation is ON. So in the worst case, the item that we're going to be looking for is gonna be at the end of the array. Now because the linear search algorithm will look at each item in turn, the time taken is directly proportional to the size of the data set. So it's ON. With a binary search, okay, in the worst case, the item that we're going to be looking for is again going to be at the end. Now because the binary search algorithm will look at the middle item and half the size of the array on each iteration, think about it this way. A doubling of the size of the data set will only result in one more iteration at most. So if you were to feed a binary search algorithm with um, a data set that is twice the size as um, it, it worked on previously, that binary search algorithm is only going to have to do one more operation to find the item. So as the data set doubles in size, the binary search algorithm is only going to do one more operation. So for that reason, it's highly efficient and its big O is log n.